Hey, and the program is Conversations. My name is Elizabeth Amai. As always, we have something to discuss, something to share, something to conversate. And then today, it's not um, exactly very fun-packed because it's something that affects us. And a lot of us do not even know what to do about it. It is cancer. Now, the 4th of uh, this month was marked out as a cancer day, but I know that uh, for the month of February, it is cancer month all through. That means a whole lot will be said, a whole lot will be discussed, a whole lot will also be um, communicated about the cancer, especially as it pertains those of us here in Nigeria. Well, you all know I'm not a doctor. But I'm opportune to have uh, loads of them seated here with me, and especially people who are well vested in this particular field of medicine. They'll be teaching us a whole lot of things, and I'm particularly excited too because we'll be finding out certain help when it comes to funding if you are, you know, a, a victim of uh, cancer. Mind you, cancer is no respect of gender, religion. You know, age, whatever it, you call it, it does not understand that. So it's imperative that we all sit down and listen to this conversation as we begin. Let me start. I'm not going to introduce anybody. Let's let's start, ladies first. Introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. My name is Dr. Shagaya. Uh, I'm a consultant oncologist. I work at the National Hospital, and at the moment, I'm the head of department. So we've been doing a lot of stuff on World Cancer Day, but prior to this, I actually trained at that center. Coincidentally, my trainer is here. That's where you shared with. So, we've been living, we've been going on this journey for quite a while, and I'm happy to be here. All right, so let's. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is uh, Dr. Ukoma Chikadibia. I seem to be a national hospital affair. I was just trained as a hematologist at the National Hospital Abuja. Uh, so, I'm a hematologist. Alfred America Center Kefi, and also the founder and initiator of uh, the Kemia Care Plus Initiative, the Blood Cancer NGO. Right. So we're going over to the trainer, whom I also know is the founding uh, father of that particular department. I want to use the word founding father. And I'm not going to say your name, you say it yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Dr. Razak Kuyeshegu. I'm a consultant, radiation, and clinical oncologist at the National Hospital of Jack and also the chairman of the multidisciplinary cancer team management in the hospital that is charged with the responsibility of screening patients for the Cancer Health Fund. You know, it's um, quite uh, interesting to have all of you seated here, and I'm tempted to actually introduce myself to as doctor. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody is <laughs> doctor, doctor. Okay, I'm Dr. Elizabeth, you know, yeah, charged welcome. with the responsibility of making sure that everything here flows very well. Yeah. But for now, let's take a break. <laughs> Cancer ranks top on the chart as a leading cause of death and an important barrier to increasing life expectancy in every country of the world. According to the World Health Organization in 2019, it is the second leading cause of death in 112 of 183 countries, affecting people before the age of 70 and ranking third and fourth in 23 other countries. In Nigeria, cancer is responsible for 72,000 deaths with an estimated 102,000 cases annually, with cases varying by gender. For men, the most common types of cancer a prostate, colorectum, and non-Hunchkin lymphoma. On the other hand, for women, they are breast cancer, cervical cancer, and ovarian cancer. Breast cancer affects people in Nigeria, with 12% of the disease representing new cases and 25% of all cancers in women. Cells in healthy breast tissue can become cancerous and can spread to other parts of the body. Symptoms include a large lump, swelling, pain in the breast, bloody discharge of the nipple, the skin peeling on your breast, an inverted nipple, and so on. There are also different types of breast cancer, such as invasive ductal carcinoma and angiosarcoma. Although they generally have less of it, men have breast tissue just like women do and can get breast cancer too. However, 
it is a rare occurrence. Cervical cancer is a type of cancer that starts in the cervix. The cervix connects the uterus to the vagina. Many women with cervical cancer do not realize they have the disease early on because it usually does not cause any visible symptoms until the late stages. Typical cervical cancer symptoms are unusual bleeding, such as in between periods, after sex, or after menopause, vagina discharge that looks or smells different than usual, pain in the pelvis, needing to urinate more often, pain during urination, and so on. Most cervical cancer cases are caused by the human papilloma virus, also known as HPV. Nevertheless, cervical cancer is treatable if caught early. The four main treatments are surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and targeted therapy, whether from genetics, lifestyle choices, environment, or a combination of all, cancer can affect anyone regardless of their background. There is no known cure for the disease as of today. However, one can reduce one's risk to it by leading a healthy lifestyle, eat healthy, exercise frequently, and get regular medical checkups. Early detection is always key in fighting cancer. Have you done your self-breast examination today? If you're just joining us, you're right on time. It's conversation and we're looking at cancer. It's a raging uh, thing as we speak. A whole lot of people are under the weather because, in fact, they're just beyond under the weather. That's me talking. But um, today, Elizabeth is not going to be doing a lot of talking. We'll move it to the people who understand it better. Uh, Dr. Ishigen, let me start from you because, uh, obviously, you're the trainer <laughs> of the experts. You saw the feature there, and um, when the lady was asking the question, I almost, I almost saw myself trying to check myself <laughs> because I think I am one of those who are guilty. From your experience, are Nigerians responding to what they should be doing to ensure that uh, these things are off, even though we really don't know what the problem is? No. <clears throat> They're wow. not responding as they should because the narrative hasn't changed. Since 30, 40 years ago, we're talking about cancer presenting late, it's still the same. Especially breast, that is a very obvious uh, part of the body. Patients still present very late. I people still present very late. Even cervical cancer that is readily preventable by some form of screening and takes a long time to develop into invasive, people still present very late. So the awareness is probably not yet enough and uh, Couple with uh, poverty as well. Uh, people are still poverty. Poverty. Very late. Yes. Sir. Wow. What has poverty got to do with it? Well, the cancer treatment anywhere in the world is not cheap. No, I mean in terms of um, identifying and presenting. Early. Yes. Some of them come to the hospital, mm -hmm. and when they are told what to do and what it entails, they disappear. I mean, people tell them about some other cheaper alternatives, which doesn't work from experience. But they choose that first and try it first. Since, it's, I mean, since the orthodox one is expensive, so that's what I mean by poverty. They can't afford, most, most of the patients cannot afford because a good number of them still pay for out of pocket they can, they cannot afford it. So they would rather try these other cheaper alternatives which have been failing all along and still failing even now. Wow. Anyway, I'll leave that um, because um, I don't know about costs. I've never really had uh, one who is so close. But I know that uh, in your experience, uh, Dr. Chika Dibia, yeah. you would have had a lot of experiences as well. Now, when we talk about cancer, you know, maybe from my perspective as a woman, a lot of us quickly think about the breasts, mostly. Men, a lot of time, always think that it's a women's business. Are men really affected? Of course, um, like, uh, if you know, cancer affects almost every organ or system of the body, from the head to the toe. So every system of the body can be affected by cancer. Just we're talking about breast cancer, cervical cancer, but those are the most common ones here in Nigeria. And then if you now go to the blood can also be affected, which is where I, I come from. Uh, there are a lot of blood cancers, lymphomas are there, which is the fourth most common cancer in Nigeria. Um, then you have a, a 
the leukemias. Leukemia is the sixth most common cancer in Nigeria. But 76? The sixth most common sixth, cancer. Sixth, okay. And they're not being discussed most, most time when you talk about cancer. Talk about we always think leukemia is Englishman disease. Mm -hmm. No, it is very much here with us. And mm -hmm. I think there is even more. Even the name is English. <laughs> I think it's a little more based because <laughs> they are not being, most of them present, because of the of presentation, there's no swelling, no ulcer, like, on, like other cancer, we see a big mass and so on and so forth. But in, in leukemia, there's no swelling, uh, but the person keeps dying slowly. And they, the incredible person usually is that of uh, like a fever um, uh, infections. So they keep treating for malaria and typhoid repeatedly before they became too late. So every organ and system can be affected. And just like he said, they see the same for the past 30 years. And I just want to add to what you just said. Uh, one other thing which is a stigma and fear, uh, which is very, like, very rampant here in our, in our, in our country. Most who come like, when they go to the Cayman, even when they come to the hospital and you tell them this, uh, this diagnosis, mm -hmm. and they say, ah, this, this is going to be treated in the hospital. It's not hospital business. And they go away. So, and again, those who have the problem, who are fear, afraid that it might be a cancer problem, I don't want to present to the hospital because of that level, you might have cancer. So it's there too, and there too. Wow. Uh, we want to get to Dr. Shagai, but they say ladies first after gentlemen. So I want to go back to <laughs> and get to, because he said something that, uh, you know, got me thinking. Cancer, someone says it does not respect age, really. But are there cases of younger people, like children, you know, infants, adolescents, you know, getting involved in a cancer, you know, domain? To I thought you were... No, you. Okay, mm. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, cancer, like you said, doesn't respect any age. It can even occur in utero, right in the womb. So you've seen cancer in one year old, six months old. One year old? Yes. yes. At birth. At birth. At birth? Yes. yes. So it doesn't Why would have caused that? Well, there are many things that could have caused that. that you see, genetic composition, mutation. Those ones are probably related to some of genetic mutation that the child was have inherited from the two parents, which probably wouldn't uh, have, uh, have been manifested in the parents, but now manifested in the uh, manifesting the child because of certain circumstances. So it will occur in as young as six months, one month, I mean one 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 year old baby, tumor affecting the eye, mm. affecting the kidney, so many of them that uh, so it will occur in children. In infants and in children too, so they, are, they have their own set of cancers, just like adults have their own set of cancers. There are set of children uh, cancer that affects children as well. Wow! I'll get to what predisposes us to that, especially with the young people. For adults, a lot of times we talk about lifestyle. Doctor Shagai, uh, doctor mentioned something about uh, you know this cost being uh, not um, uh, not being uh, cheap at all. You know. Even though I have also heard from certain domain that certain diseases are big men diseases, meaning that they are actually very expensive and cancer is one of them. When one contracts cancer, I don't want to put a cost to it, but can you share a bit of, you know, what will be rolling out of a pot? Let's use, let's say, breast, for example. Breast cancer is not one disease. It's not. Most it, inside breast, inside yes. breast there are subtypes. Wow. And the subtypes determine what. So let us say we have That's a That's why when you are writing the exam, they say yes. A, A, A1, B, yes. A2. So you have one, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> he, he would laugh because he was, he's very pro <laughs> subtyping breast cancer. So. You have the maybe the luminal A, let's, you know, one type where their chemotherapy might be 20,000. And at the other spectrum, it might go as high as 1 million every three weeks. Now, there's some, like I said, stage. If it is an early stage, let's say maybe even colon cancer, for example, that's of the intestine, you can actually treat and cure that patient with surgery alone. So maybe surgery, 250,000 naira, plus or minus you can, you know, treat that patient. And then on the other spectrum, you have a very advanced disease, has passed the stage where surgery will be beneficial. They now have to give chemotherapy and targeted therapy. This patient's treatment may go as high as one million naira every three weeks. Every three weeks? Yes, ma'am. One million naira? Yes, ma'am. 
So, when we talk about early um, detection being the key, it's not just about because of the cure. It's also, also the cost. Most times, the earlier it is, the cheaper it is. And like WHO has told us, one third of cancers are preventable. Another third can be cured if caught early. So, it's a win-win for most people to target that two thirds. Two thirds is past mark. There'll be those that, even if you try to figure out, can still happen. Even if you try to screen it, you can't screen for them, you can't, they just sneak up on you. But if you have those ones that we can screen, those ones we can prevent, like you know the ones that you can vaccinate against, those ones, we really should target those ones. Like I was telling someone the other day that, you know, if you could vaccinate your younger ones with HPV against C cervix, it's like giving them a, you know, a house. It's like an investment in their health. That way you're almost certain my child will never have this malignancy. So that is an investment we parents should make sure we key into. That's a cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not just for cervical, surprisingly. When you speak this big English, yeah, right. I get confused. Human papilloma virus okay. has been associated with some cancers. Cancer of the cervix, that's the neck of the womb. Mm. Cancer of the penis, cancer of the vulva, and cancer of the throat. These are basic cancers that have all been tied to human papilloma virus. Okay. So for those, um, most times it's given to people who between the ages of 9 to 15, even though they've now extended it, if you're able to test and you find that the person doesn't have HPV, you can actually give the vaccine. The three of them all given within six months and then you are able to prevent these cancers. So if you have gone past 19? If you've gone past 19 and you've not been sexually active, you can still take it. And, and then if for you those, been sexually who, active? those who are active, you, it is advised that you test to make sure you have not been exposed to it. Okay. And if you are sure if the test come out clear, you can take the vaccine. It's available. Okay. It's just that you need to ask those who know where to get it. And the vaccine is also not too expensive. Is it free? Um, it's like not the polio. free for now. It's, it, it's free for it's now. It's not free. It's oh. not free for now. But this is an investment. Okay. You know, so for me, even though it might be a bit pricey compared to all the ones in the EPI program for immunizations, it's worth taking advantage of. All right. Um, let me uh, hold your thoughts there because I want to still get, go deeper into the funds part. But uh, let's go to Dr. Chikoli because he mentioned the leukemia and uh, blood and all of that. You know, and you got me scared when you said the symptoms are almost the same, you know, with uh, the regular sickness we have. So what do I get to do? And how do I even know it is? I, you know, Nigerians generally, like, you know, you get a headache, you get fever, we buy malaria tablets, and we take it. It's always malaria, yes. you know, and especially if we recover fast. But then maybe one week after, yes. you relapse. Yes. Tell me, how do I, what, what's my first step to ensuring that um, I don't put my life in danger? Okay, I think, uh, just like you said, um, that's, that's our problem here in Nigeria. We go up cancer treatment. I uh, believe every, every fever is malaria. And so we keep treating for malaria repeatedly. And um, uh, again, most of us believe because it's associated with uh, anemia. What happened in uh, leukemia is that that's one part of the blood cells. There are three parts of blood cells, the red blood cell, white blood cell, and the platelets. The, when, once the white blood cell is, is affected and it's being overproduced, it tends to depress the other forms of blood cells being produced. And so in that case, the white blood cell does not function. It, fun it, it functions as a protein of the body. The red blood cell is not available to give you energy to move about, and the platelet may not be there to prevent you from bleeding, so the person may bleed. So what mainly is patients have anemia and have fever. And so they keep on treating for fever, malaria, and getting transfused repeatedly. So the important thing is that once you have been treated, like you said, you treat and it relapsed again, is to request for further investigation. And it simply is do, do a full blood count and, and uh, a full blood count and uh, prefer a blood film, which is available in every uh, tertiary hospital. And which is available. So, and again, if we are doing our regular um, yearly checkup, it tends to help. Uh, when you come to talk about chronic leukemia, some people have that in their system for more than two, three years without knowing that they have the problem. Mm. Most of them are caught when they come for maybe job uh, screening. Mm. And then, you know, the, the, the uh, food block can be another boy second is approaching over 100. And if you're not investigated for another, they have uh, chronic leukemia. 
And so these are if we are doing our regular uh, checkups and also being uh, have high incidence of suspicion when you, have, when you are treated and then you are not getting what you're supposed to get, request for further evaluation. The request will be referred to uh, a professor who can be able to assist. You know, are there people, this leukemia or blood cancer generally, are there people who are predominantly, you know, uh, more susceptible to it? Because sometimes you hear certain blood types, certain, you know, blood group or whatever can easily be victim of this sickness. Are there, is it the same for not, that one? Not exactly. Um, but, but what I would say that there are, there are preventive factors which have been found to have further increased of to having leukemias and uh, with a quick, quick, one of them could be high radiation energy, high radiation energies. Um, and then, of course, uh, petrochemical uh, uh, um, tarot tiles and so on so forth. Those ones tend to affect those who work in those environments are advised to check more frequently. Mm -hmm. If you are a working petrochemical company, rubber company, uh, you rubber work company, yes, I work with heavy size and so on and so forth. You need to check more uh, more frequently about where, where your blood, uh, your, your, your full blood come to know when the blood begin going to, going to go up. Okay, I, re I remember some time ago somebody was saying uh, you don't leave water can in your uh, car with water. Yeah. After a while, you don't drink it. Maybe that's also part of it. But rolling the ball back to Doctor Yeshuga, I would like to know our lifestyle. Everyone has spoken, and I see that you know, running through their speeches. What are those uh, predisposing factors in our lifestyle that you know exposes us to uh, cancer, whatever type of cancer? Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> like has been said, the causes of cancer or risk factors there are majorly two types: there are those that are modifiable, and there are those that no, are not modifiable. The not mod non modifiable ones are the ones that are has to do with your with your gene, genetic composition, which you inherited from your you can't change that. You are what you are, you've been composed already. Those ones are not modifiable. Maybe uh, but there are those that are modifiable and the two of them come together to cause cancer. So the modifiable ones are the ones that are in charge of all of us. These are the modifiable risk factors. And they include, like we've been saying, I mean, like your weight, your diet my weight yes, yes. <laughs> if you are overweight there are people Ew. that are <laughs> 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 I'm, sorry, I'm sorry it affects everybody if you are overweight there are type of cancer that are much more common in people who are overweight the diet you eat i mean where you live also what you are exposed to the type of infection you are exposed to frequently and uh, also for other things i mean like environment if there is too much pollution uh, too much of uh, radiation in your environment, or what to do and taste too much of radiation, you are a minor or something like that, you are exposed to a lot of radiation, all these things, or you are a woodwork uh, worker who work with this dust. Sawdust. Sawdust and all so that. So wearing face mask for such people. It's important people. for those people, it's very important. So all this... What about the dust we have about now? Because sweeping the house is actually very horrible. Sometimes the the, uh, you know, water spilling on the dust gives you this sweet, uh, clear smell. You want to inhale it. Is it also bad? I well, mean, I'm just being me. Yes. <laughs> well, well, those ones are, uh, contribute to allergy. Oh, okay. It, it can cause allergy, cause to sneeze a lot and okay. all that, but may not be <coughs> cancerous as such. Okay. But there are other things in the, in, the, in the environment that you breathe in and breathe out that could predispose you to cancer. Your diet also is very, very important. Okay. And that's why we are emphasizing these days that our local diet are very, very pro uh, protective. But a lot of our mothers these days are abandoning our local diet and feeding the children with all sorts of junks, which is not desirable. These days we are seeing cancer that we normally see or we, we are told should be seen is people who are 50s, 60s. We are now seeing in the 20s because they don't eat good food anymore. Uh, uh, food, yeah, they eat junk. I won't mention all, the, all those, I mean, all those th things that are easy to produce. Some, if, some children are even they eat them raw. Meat pie. I would, I wouldn't mention <laughs> it. I don't want to live. Cake. It. I don't. They eat them raw without cooking or just soak them in water and they eat them. And this it takes a lot of time. No, you're talking it. about no noodles. <laughs> and it takes a lot of time uh, to, to, to be digested from the from the gut, and they have impact. The literal impact on the lining of the gut. So by the time a child eats this for 15 years, 20 years, it's a requisite for, for disaster. So our diet, what we eat, what we drink, 
a lot of drinks are laden with sugar. I mean, that, this is what to give children. The children love sweeties, so we, they are laden with sugar. I will give them all these things. Computer sponsors, apart from the genetic composition, which are not modifiable, what to eat, what to drink, what to breathe, what you are exposed to, your environment you live in, all these things also contribute to to dispose you to the type of cancer that you have. Wow. Is that, you were going to say just something? Just to add your, uh, this, uh, uh, what you just said, uh, cigarette smoking oh. has been found to affect almost all the cancers. Mm. All uh, and it, those who die from cancer, as they would do cigarette smoking. So that's something we can modify. Um, and we talk about beverages, uh, which you just mentioned now, which is very important. That's why I'm happy with at least the syntax which the government is introducing, even though it is not up to where it should be by now. Um, uh, we think that those things should be scaled down. Uh, most people see cigarette smoking as a uh, you know, elastic. Uh, uh, it's of big men. Uh, our movies show to be a, if every big man has smoked cigarettes on our, our films nowadays. I think we should start de-escalating de those things. So that you two will begin to understand that these things are actually not uh, helpful to, to, for their help to our heads. I hope my coffee is not um, <laughs> a problem. Well, for I, don't cancer. Much, I don't know how much sugar you have there. No, no sugar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you, he mentioned something about weight, and there's something I noticed recently, especially in Abuja. Our children are overweight. Obesity is... We pride with it. Yes. Oh, Obesity, see, chubby, just, nice child. He's just, he's just yes. five years chubby. and he looks 20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we make fun with it. There's something called weight for height. There's something... You, you should be... BMI. The right, exactly. You want to be the right weight for your height and age. So us mothers, the younger mothers, fat, a chubby child is not a good investment. You want a healthy child. Another thing we're not doing enough of is exercise. Our grandparents walked to the farm, walked to the market. We sit in our cars. The driver drops you at the door of your office. You get in there, the air conditioner is on. We've lost a lot of things that we needed, to, you know, we're doing in the past. I've seen a few people now begin to exercise, you know, but it should become a lifestyle. At least 30 minutes, three times a week. We really need to get ourselves back to, you know, genetically, Africans, we do have a less tendency for many of these malignancies. Less genetic tendency. But when we do catch them, we tend to die from them faster because of the lack of health care and the fact that we present late and many other things. So let us take advantage of what God has naturally given us, which is wholesome food. Abroad, you pay double the price for organic food. Here in FCT, you can go to Bush Market and get your things straight from the farm. So we have wholesome food here. We you can take actually advantage plant of that. it on your own. Exactly. You, you know, can have, have ugu in your, in your Yes, you can yeah. have ugu tomatoes. You can have a lovely little vegetable garden at home. Yeah. Or even plant your yam. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, so let, we're not as, in, we shouldn't try to aim to be so industrialized mm. that we lose the advantage of our organic and natural life, you know. Okay, you know, this program is conversation and um, a lot of people are already asking questions. I want to take them, but let's just take a breather okay. and come back to take these questions.
All right, if you're just joining us, we just missed the first half and uh, we're into the second half and probably get into the 18 later. And I said a lot of questions are up here and uh, we're prepared for you. The doctors are ready. So they'll definitely take all your questions as much as we can. Let's start with the first one. It says, uh, how can I control and manage my weight problem? You didn't write your name or where you're coming from, but any of you can actually take that. Okay, for weight, um, if it's a female, as she gets older, when you, you know, start crossing towards your middle age and menopause, your metabolism is not as fast as it used to be. So you're going to have to make some obvious changes. There's something called portion control. Don't eat to be full, you know, how you just eat. Always be conscious of what you're eating. Aim to do a balanced diet. Aim to have portion control. So manage your portions. Don't, you know, just, and then stay away from um, processed food pastries, biscuits, cakes, sodas, you know, sugary things that will, you know, just sit. And then try not to eat late at night. Try to exercise. And I think with that, you should be able to control your weight. But the thing to do is be conscious of it okay. and just let it go. Okay. And then some other things like contraceptives have been known to just become difficult to control. Talk to your doctor, um, you know, go online, read things about diet control. All right, another person says here, again, he didn't write his name. Good day, Maz. And um, I'm watching your health program conversation based on cancer. Please, I would love to know what and how I can get vaccinated on this. I think he spoke about vaccination. Okay, where do we get the vaccines? Well, I think it, it depends on which vaccine. I think the person we're talking about here is that it has a HPV vaccine. Uh, that's for young girls for okay. now. Um, for now, it is not yet part of our um, national pool, uh, 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 MPI program, uh, but it's available but not yet disseminated in the country. We're still working on it. Hopefully, I don't know if uh, um, if we get down to orders from. But at least have, ask your uh, go to your hospital and ask your doctor how you can get that. Yes. All right. The vaccines there are two of them. There's Gardasil, uh, there's Severix, okay. that are available in the country. There's another nanovalent one, but that isn't available. The thing to do is, if you go to your, the hospital, the immunization center in whichever tertiary hospital, and you tell them you want to get this vaccine, they will help you get it. Okay. Yes. I'm going to come back to you, but let's uh, have uh, Dr. Yesha going to take this next question. It says, good day, doctor. Uh, there are actually two people here that wrote in about the same thing. Let me see if I can squeeze their questions into one. It says, uh, what are the effects of prostate cancer and uh, what are the effects of the surgery on my, you know, male, whatever. And he says, uh, one of them is uh, Je uh, Johnson from Biosa State. Thank you very much. Is it, the, is it prostate cancer? It says prostate affects, cancer. Yes, men. It affects men, men only. Yeah. It's only men that have prostate cancer. Prostate, prostate the prostate gland mm. has a small role to play in uh, sexual uh, performance. And so, but the effect of prostate cancer is that all the treatments, whether it is surgery, whether it is drug, chemotherapy, or radiation, they all, <clears throat> they're all geared towards reducing the hormone that propel uh, sexual performance in men. That is androgen. We call it androgen. It is the androgen in men that propels this, I mean, sexual performance. And it's the same androgen that propels the uh, cancer cells. So the treatment, all the treatment are there towards reducing it. And once they are reduced or removed, of course, what is this? Because like, 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 probably no, one of the treatment is, that is very effective, the removal of the testicles. It removes the source of the, uh, the So the, you remove the, the... testicles. So the man is... Uh, that's the problem with men. Removing the testicles alone will reduce the, 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 the symptoms and signs of the cancer for quite a number of years. But a lot of men don't want that. But it's either you do that surgically, if you don't remove it surgically, you can also remove it or suppress the hormone medically. So whatever, whichever way is done is aimed at reduce, removing the androgen or reducing the level of androgen, which will reduce the, 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 the virulence of the cancer. But of course, it has effect on the libido of uh, the male person. So either way, the libido is affected. The sexual performance is affected. Now, if a man does not remove it so that his sexual performance will still be in order, would, it, would there be side effects on the prostate that is still there? 
Because I know some men will tell you I'd rather walk away. Yes, you see, it's not out of wickedness. It has to be that way for some time. Maybe for three years. After three years and the and the thing is controlled, totally controlled, then it can be the can, it can back. be resuscitated oh, by okay. way of giving them drugs. But that's the only viable way to control the cancer cell if it is uh, ma ma manifested already. Is the only way is to reduce the level of androgen in in, in 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 the blood. So once it is controlled and fully controlled, and we are, there is evidence because there are markers that we use to monitor it. Once there is evidence that is fully controlled, then the person can then be resuscitated again by way of reintroducing the the the, 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 the hormones to to influence the sexual performance again. All right, I have another message from Sam in Ogun State. But before I take that, Doctor, um, some people actually wrote in prior to that uh, today when we had our promo asking for the um, for, is it government uh, funds, you know, f to assist people with uh, cancer. You want to tell us more about it and then probably the numbers to uh, call or assist. Okay, so um, we have something called the Cancer Health Fund. Cancer Health Fund? Yes, it was okay. initially called the Catastrophic Health Fund, but now it's called the Cancer Health Fund. It's the government's way of assisting patients who can't pay their bills. But at the moment, we're look, they're looking, they're covering or they're helping cancer of the breast, cancer of the cervix, and cancer of the prostate, which are the common top three. Prostrates? Prostrate cancer, breast cancer, and cervical cancer. Okay. The process is very simple. All the patient has to do is to go online and fill out the Cancer Health Fund um, application. For those who don't have access to internet or don't have access to, or are not literate enough to do it, you just go to the hospital. In this area, National Hospital is the center. If you come to National Hospital to the other art department, which is oncology department, we will direct you accordingly. And somebody will help you to fill out your information. Okay, like I can walk into any government hospital? No, not because any government. I, I see a whole lot of our writers are coming are writing in from different parts of Nigeria. Okay. If I'm in Ogun State, like Sam says he's in Ogun State, somebody in Bayosa, where do I go to? The closest um, center to someone in Ogun State I think would be Lagos. Uh, Lagos, where? yes. Lagos. Okay. Uh, Bayosa? The closest to Bayosa? Enugu. Enugu. Enugu, okay. And All then right. up north is I think Gombe. Gombe. Gombe is one up north. Because there are t six hospitals presently offering these services. Okay. And um, this is geopolitical zones of the country. Okay. But just to add, um, there are a lot of NGOs who are, who are involved in this, uh, promoting this. Mm. And I think if you enter any, any, any uh, cancer NGO office, requesting to for assistance, they will really assist you. Okay. And you can you have been able to assist, even though we are focused on blood cancer, but we have assisted some uh, breast People cancer patients to feed the blood and from. register online. So, and that, so once they are uh, it's approved, okay, they, they will now have to go to National Hospital to assess care. So okay. that's how it is. So uh, it's covered all over the country, but only six hospitals in six geopolitical zones. You want to give us the names of the hospital? Yes, National Hospital. It's National Hospital? Then go Federal Medical Center, Gumbe. Gumbe. Uh, University of Benin, this hospital. University of Bada, University College Hospital, Ibada. Ibada, okay. Lagos University Hospital. Okay. And this uh, hospital in Enugu. Enugu, okay. All now, right, so. so when the patient fills out the form, they need to go and see the doctor that they filled as their doctor. Okay. In the clinic. So if I have a patient who is, let's say, in Nasarawa, was able to fill out that form, has a CHF number, they need to come to National Hospital and meet up with the doctor that they have chosen. You actually have the names, you just choose. And the good thing is that the people who are listed there are people who take care of these malignancies. So you just choose whoever you want, and then you come to the hospital, meet up with that doctor at their clinic. Mm -hmm. They will evaluate you, have a management plan that's written out, then they will send you to the social welfare. Because in as much as um, this is help for all, Mm -hmm. It's targeted at the moment for those who can't afford it. That way we can, it can spread to more people. So they now, with the standardized way that they have, determine who qualifies for it. Very transparent and it's so easy. We've started, Dr. Shagun happens to be the chairman of the multidisciplinary team because we don't want, um, we want to be really transparent. Okay. So everybody, the patient is presented. 
um, the social welfare is there, you know, so everybody sees, you know, and then he, we approve an amount, you know, there's a, a ceiling, but we approve some amount, it goes through the, you know, and then it's approved. We've actually started treating a few people in national hospital in anticipation for release of those funds. So, uh, since you're in charge of a disciplinary committee, I hope we, like she said, is as transparent as it, it should is, be. It is. Because uh, we wouldn't want a situation where the big man, you know, comes in to take what belongs to the very small man. Yeah, we try to eliminate, I mean, we wouldn't even recommend them, okay. the big people. Like if you have, for example, if you have support, like you work with some big, big companies, like petroleum industries, and you have a spouse who's working there, things like that, and they give support, we will not mention them to you. But we, when you see Poor people, you, some of the poor people, you know them. They will tell you, I mean, some of them will tell you they cannot afford, and one of the reasons they are coming late is they cannot afford a lot of things. So those are the type of people we uh, uh, suggest to be included. We screen the social worker, they go through the social workers, and those who ask them questions, but, I mean, peculiar questions about their home, their livelihood, means of income. In fact, some of the people who have support, they're even eliminated. You say you have a brother in Canada who is supporting you, you have another sister in the US who is supporting you. Well, you have support. There are those people that are, who don't even have support at all. Feeding is a problem to some of them. Even to buy anti malaria is some of them. So those are the people that are incorporated, are screened, and in, included in this scheme. Wow, that's great. Now, there were headlines, you know, um, you the mentioned. I mentioned earlier on are uh, for National Hospital. Okay. Department of Radiotherapy and Oncology. Okay. So, we have five of them. 0916 Your director is uh, listening. Please, uh, okay. All right. That number is for the Oncology Secretariat. Okay. So, if you like this type of information, if you call that number, somebody will answer and be able to give you details on what to do. Mm -hmm. Then I have the next one, 245 that's for the medical records. Mm -hmm. You want to book to see an oncologist. All you have to do is call that number between the hours of 8 and 4 p.m. and they will be able to book you to see an oncologist. Okay. 0916 um, is for radiotherapy. So you've already seen the doctor, you've been scanned, and you're waiting to know what is going on. You call that number, you give them your name and your number, they will be able to go trace your, you know, trace you and let you know exactly what, this helps patients not to have to travel all the way, calling people and people, you know, not getting the right information. 0916-4444-243 is, uh, is a nurse, speak to a nurse. You're taking chemotherapy, you're having side effects, or you want, you know, you take, you want, to, you need a blood transfusion. Any information that you need from the wards, you can get that. And then the last one is zero nine one six four 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 two four six, and that is the doctor on call. These are numbers peculiar to National Hospital Department of Radiotherapy and Oncology. It's just to make it easier for patients, and it was in keeping with uh, closing the care gap. I felt that communication between patients and their caregivers, if we improved it and we controlled and made sure it was the right information, especially information where we are also answerable to. I thought that would help. All right, so that's a good one. I also think you should add uh, another number, which is um, the number for little TLC. You know, when you're alone <laughs> and yes, you're, you're worried. Yes, you need yeah, someone to talk to. Yeah, you, you are need right. Somebody, you just want somebody to you know, shout you, you, at yes. and then the person tell you it's okay to shout. Then you, when you call you, this you, and you're you, just upset. You know, you could call it TLC, you could call it psychology, it's okay. No, you're, you're right, I, I didn't think of that, that's, that's something, no, you are right, because um, we found over the last one week, we're doing, a, I'm trying to do a, a little sampling, mm -hmm. where prior to um, this lines, we did a, a stress level, we, you know, and we're hoping after three months, we'll go back to those same group of patients, 200 of them, and check their stress levels, and see if the better communication has helped. So when you say, T so maybe I should, 0916-4444, TLC, <laughs> we should think about having that. I think, I, that's what she yes, can, I think she can do. Yes. Can a pregnant, a pregnant woman actually go for breast cancer screening and uh, whatever before or after delivery? It's actually a question from a viewer. It says, can pregnant women go for breast cancer surgery or should it be after delivery? Surgery or yes. screening? No, it says surgery. 
Well, um, but you might as well add the screening. Anyway. Okay, I think um, um, yeah, it, there's no yes and no for that question. I okay. think the best is if the person already seen an oncologist, uh, it's best to discuss with the oncologist and they should evaluate the risk involved to know the person needs to add the surgery now or after. All right. That, yes. Thank you. Uh, good that, morning. Can I just put in that okay. question? Dr. Isiago, is a question he loves to ask at the exams. <laughs> Well, so you should answer it. I was going to actually add another one to it yes. so he can uh, pick up from okay. there. This person says, please, I want to know if all breast discharge uh, is cancerous because I know someone who has um, a prolactin and it also discharges water from the breasts. Thank you. Jesse from Worry. No, no, not all discharges from the breast. We all know what normal breast milk is. The breast discharges milk mm -hmm. for the child. But <clears throat> if the discharge now becomes bloody, for example, that is ominous. We don't want blood to be coming from the breast. No, it's only fluid, which might be white or slightly yellow. But when it is bloody, that, that is ominous. It becomes a problem. It becomes problematic. Okay. The, the issue of screening, for women, because if it is just screening, during pregnancy, it's not the appropriate time to screen because that time the breast is full, is um, lobulated, preparing for lactation and all that. That is not the appropriate. I mean, there will be plenty of fats that will mar any mass block that is there. The that will, yes, it will, mm -hmm. will block it, will not be seen. So, during pregnancy, is not the appropriate time to screen a woman for breast cancer. But if it is obvious and is uh, and is diagnosed, a woman because breast Cancer can be diagnosed at any stage, at any time. Mm. If it is diagnosed during surgery, yes, uh, during pregnancy, sorry, surgery can be done. Mm -hmm. Surgery can be done to remove it because if you leave it alone, again, the hormone that, that prepares the body, uh, the body of the woman for the baby is the same thing that fuels this cancer okay. for a lot of them. So surgery can be done during pregnancy, but all other treatments by way of chemotherapy or radiotherapy cannot be done and should not be done during pregnancy because of the unborn baby. It has effects on the unborn baby, especially during the first three, four months when a lot of organs are being formed. If you introduce radiation and chemotherapy at this stage, you might end up doing something that will affect the unborn baby. So that is not the time to treat a, a, a pregnant woman with breast cancer. Beyond that, maybe seven months, down to six months, after seven months, seven months, you see seven months, then the chemotherapy can be introduced. Yeah. That time, organogenesis in the child will have been completed. Well, I noticed when you were talking, Dr. Shagaya was looking at you like, are you freaking serious? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because I know it's a question that, you know, when you go for your postgraduate exam, yeah. that's the, the, he, he said the question for you when you went to his... They loved us. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I looked at him like, oh. Okay, well, now. So now the people out there know, especially those who are going to go for exams, you know the answer. <laughs> All right, so um, speaking of answers, someone from uh, Kefi, Kefi is, ask, uh, is asking, her name is Evelyn Beto, can fibroid turn into cancer? I just threw it open for any oh. of them. Yes, fibroid. it can. Mm. It can? Yes, it can. Really? Yes, it can, but it's, a wow. it's, it's 2%. 2% 2 of fibroids can turn into um, a cancer. Wow. That is the reason why when your fibroid is removed, it must be sent for a histology. They must biopsy it. All right, I still see several questions here coming in. All can all lumps in the breast be cancerous? I don't know if I can take. Let yes, me just you can take that question. Okay, <laughs> all lumps in the breasts are they cancerous? No. 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 All right. So on a parting note, because uh, the rest of the questions, I'll just have to bother you at your spare time to okay. get to answer them. Uh, your final uh, is, is talk yes, for yes. Nigerians. Yes. Well, what you said, mm. all lump in the breast must come out. Must come out. Mm. Must yes. come out. Mm -hmm. All lump in the breast must come out. It's, only after, it's, cancerous. it's only after examination that you can determine whether it's cancerous okay. or not. By palpating or filling or that, you, nobody can tell you that it's cancerous or not. Oh, so okay. all lump in the breast are not cancerous, but all lump in the breast must come out and be examined. I, I want to use that word, bios or something. Biopsy. Biopsy. Oh. That, that is, you see, I told okay, you that. I'm a doctor. <laughs> yes, to be excised <laughs> and removed. Okay. <laughs> all lump in the breast must be excised and removed from the breast. Okay. But the breast is not the home for any lump, any terrible lump. The breast is lumpy, but all masses in the breast must come out and then 
the summit before right. the summit has cancelled or not. Okay, thank you. Your parting words for Nigeria. Yes, just to appreciate the Nigerian government, I think, for instituting this cancer head fund and also appealing and, um, that it should be expanded. Um, blood cancers are not yet included. Lymphoma, which is the fourth most common cancer Children. in Nigeria, is not included. Mm. So, and treating uh, leukemia is not that expensive. So, it could be uh, could be covered. So, I appeal to uh, that the fund could be upped. For them. All right, uh, Dr. Shagaya? Well, mine is, in all what we've said, the aim is not to scare people, but to empower them, to make them understand that if you catch it early, you avoid all the horrible things that will go wrong. You catch prostate cancer early, you might be able to start your treatment and actually stop and continue your sexuality normally. You catch breast cancer early, you can actually do breast conserving surgery. The aim is catch it early so you can live your life to the fullest. All right, catch it early. And uh, my takeaway, I'm sure a lot of us will also take that. Our lifestyle, we must moderate everything we do. And don't take pride in children's fats. Like Dr. Shagaya said, it's not an investment. It's actually digging into their lives and your pocket as well. So let's be conscious of that. Thank you so much for coming. And um, I'm going to ask you again in public, please, when we call you, to say yes, oh, because this is a very important thing for all of us. Especially we don't know where it's taking us to. Bye for now.